Cooking with Doug. Welcome again to uh, Cooking with Doug. This time I'm making basically a pasta uh, type of sauce uh, with a tuna base. And it's uh, a recipe I picked up from the Heart Foundation cookbook and I've modified it. Uh, I think originally it had celery in it, but I've substituted for green uh, peppers and I think it works fairly well. But I, I really like the flavour of it and uh, it's great for a single guy because you can get about five to six serves out of this. So you just shove it into the refrigerator and you're ready to go for, you know, like I say, at least five or six uh, meals. And I, I eat fairly big meals, so for some people might find even more. And it definitely lasts at least uh, a week or so if it's in the fridge. So, And you can probably freeze it if you want to go it long term. So. But I've never done that because I, I like to get through it. So anyway, this is this is the recipe. I'll take you through step by step and uh, see what you think. If anybody actually makes it, I'd be interested to see what you uh, think of the recipe. Okay, the first item on the agenda is the garlic, as you can see. I've just got to grab myself a knife. Uh, and also a glass of vino. It goes down very well. Cheap cab set. Okay, so what I've got here, I've got the, uh, the cloves of garlic. I've got to get, just take the skin off those. Generally just do it with my hands, easy enough. It's a bit fiddly, it takes a little bit of time, but uh, I'll get it done. But just peel off the, the skin as so, and I'll do that for the other two the same way. So now with the miracle of uh, time-lapse photography, now we're ready to just cut off the ends of the uh, the garlic cloves and then crush them. There are garlic crushes around but I just use a, uh, a knife like this. It seems to do the trick fine for me. Uh, discard those ones. Okay. Just put a bit of pressure there though. And just slice them up. That's how I do it anyway. I don't know if it's the right way but I'm I haven't really been trained to do any of this. I just uh, work out what I, what's expedient for me. It just seems to work fine. The following task I'm not looking forward to, and I hope you can guess what that is. If you saw the onions on, on the bench here, I guess you know. Got to actually uh, peel the onions and cut them. I don't really relish that task because it does get a bit of, gar uh, of onion spray and uh, can be a little irritating to the eyes. But, you know, it's a bit. So here, here are the onions. And I think two of these will do me. I would just have this to fortify me before I do the unpleasant task of going through the onions. Mm. Ah, it's good. It goes down well. Okay, so I just cut them either end, like so. and get rid of all the exterior stuff. So I'll do it this way. I don't know how the, the preferred way is to do it through by chef standards, but this is what that looks for me. I've got a bit of crud there, so you see a bit of cruddy, not so good there, so it needs to be cut. This is not the best quality. I think, you know, that's why I buy three rather than two, just in case I get a really bad one. But uh, this will be okay, it's salvageable, that's fine. Just a bit ready there. I'm even a bit anal about this, but I like to have good quality. I think that's fine. And we'll get on to the other one, same thing. Okay, now it's the wonderful task of Slicing them, I like to slice them fairly thin so they cook up okay. Yeah, that's a bit cruddy there, get rid of that. Okay. Uh, this one's a bit wide, I'd like to get a bit thinner. Okay, that's not bad for that one. Yes, well, the uh, the onions did it make me well up in the eyes, so I got a bit teary. Now I'm going to do the green peppers. That's the next item, just to cut these. They're a lot easier, they don't cause any hassles like that. So 
I cut it that way, I just cut the top off, and then what I do is I cut along the side and then right around like this. I don't know if this is preferred way of doing it, it's just the way I've, I've worked it because that, that way I get all the seed pod out, just pull it t out totally from the bottom. So you just cut it all out like that, and then you pull out that, that seed pod area. And you've still got a lot of crap here, but I'll just wash that off uh, over here. And as you can see, it doesn't take long to do it. And all I do is just slice down like that. So now we've got two halves. And I cut them like so. Just sometimes you can use all the top, sometimes you can't, depending how fibrous it is. But this one looks pretty good. I think I really virtually use all of it, so it's quite good. This must be fairly fairly new season. That that was good, good quality. All right, the grunt works out of the way, so that deserves a swig of wine, I think. Mm. Now it's just a matter of turning on the power. The well, the, yeah, it is the power. It's electric. So I'll just put some of this in the pan. Quite a bit of it. Interesting thing about olive oil, apparently if, you, uh, if it's too hot, you can lose the, the goodness of it, especially if it's virgin. Okay, now, now you have a pan's eye view. This is quite a heavy pan, I've got to say. I bought this at Big W in Melbourne, oh, probably about five or six years ago. And uh, it cost me over 50 bucks, so it's not cheap, but it is a good solid pan. And uh, it's, uh, I guess it's, it's designed for chefs because you have to have a bit of muscle to carry the, the, the big thing up. So the first thing I do is just, uh, I always put my garlic in first and brown it up a little bit. And very quickly after that, I'll put in the, uh, now look, the temperature I've picked on this scale is it's just well you can, I don't know if you can see it over there uh, yeah I think you can probably you can see just see I'll move the camera digger it's just over there it's turned over to um, okay well it's a little past halfway mark it's the best way to describe it on this particular cooker so I don't know exactly it's not I don't put it up the top top temperature but a little below and, uh, and I'll just also get my slider out a piece of equipment I basically use for this, uh, it's one piece, I bought this at DJ's, uh, made in Japan, all one piece, so it's really good quality. So I'm using my top gear stuff tonight to make this. It's nice, you know, there's nothing to break, it's just all, all one piece, it's fabulous. Yeah, the, uh, the, the onion's going next, and I'm happy to cook them for uh, some time. Uh, because you know they they can I like to get them caramelized so it's good to you know get them really cooked up and it creates a lot more flavor the pans just heating up the beauty of this pan is because it's so heavy it'll keep a constant heat once it's actually going so it's quite good for cooking okay I think we're ready uh, to put the onions in it's starting to bubble up a bit and make a bit of noise so we'll just shove them in too what I do is just break them up like so, because it's a hard one. Ah, here we go. Try to get each of the, the rings separated so it cooks evenly. There's a lot of onion here. I don't like to overcook the, um, the green peppers. I'd rather have them a little crisp and being greens. I, I prefer my greens that way. But that's just personal taste, of course. It's going well, going well. So they're all in. You can hear someone, looks like, sounds like they're bloody uh, using a motor mower at this time. This is uh, about 5.30 to 6. It's a bit late in the day to be doing that. I don't know what these people are thinking, but uh, 
That's very unusual. So I don't if you hear that in the background, I'm sorry, but I can't do much about it. One of the hassles of living in far north Queensland is a lot of noise with carpenters. Yeah, it's going well. The um, you can see it's definitely browning up, and it smells great. Love the smell of the onion cookie. So um, getting close to putting in the, um, the green peppers as well. I don't want them. Uh, I've still got to cook them to some degree, so just shove them all in. So that's all the veggies, basically. All the veggies are taken care of now. The base of the meal is all these vegetables which have been cooked. It's an amazing thing, you know, before um, we discovered fire, of course we're just hunters and gatherers, and uh, the amount of nutrition we got through our cooking, we didn't have cooking, I should say. The amount of nutrition we got out of eating was far lower than once we learned to, to make fire and then produce food like this. It's uh, a much more dense amount of, of uh, protein that you can get with, with cooked food. And good for traveling, uh, just good for incredibly increasing the energy flow. And this is one of the, um, the reasons that the IQ of Homo sapiens increased because of the availability of, of cooked food was one of the big things led to brain development. Yeah, it's a real shame you can't uh, share the smells. That's just one of the joys of cooking. It is a really nice smell. All those um, onions browning and caramelizing. Beautiful. So I'll let this progress for a few more minutes. Then I'll start adding the other ingredients. Uh, we've got the canned tomatoes, but we've also got Tomato paste. So this is the um, the Coles variety, which is more sugar in it than the um, the Woolworth one. I had to throw out a previous can, a jar of that that I had in the uh, in the, the fridge. It had got a little bit of mold at the top of the jar, so that was it. Normally you get the white mold. This is a green mold just at the top of the jar. So very easy to open the can once you get the right position. But I've, I've been an absolute moron figuring out what the best position is, but I think I've finally got it worked out. And it makes child's play of uh, And it is a great smell. Oh, beautiful, really nice. Okay, time for tomatoes. Add tomatoes. Okay, they're in. On top of that, uh, tomato paste. I play it by ear, but I've usually put about four or five spoonfuls in. Make it five, I've got quite a big uh, lot here. Okay, now we mix this all together. Of course, we don't just leave it lying there in a bit of warm. We make sure that it's evenly distributed. Right, and we put in the main ingredients, the uh, tuna. John West, I get the John West tutor, I like that more than the other brands. I think it's better quality. I think it comes from Thailand actually. Waste not, whilst not, I'll try to get as much of the ingredients out as I can into the uh, mix. Now we just uh, 
Again, distribute it evenly. Tuna was part of the original uh, hard foundation recipe, so that's something I hadn't thought about, but it's a, it's a, I, I like it. It's a very healthy sort of food, having fish. So I, I eat it quite regularly. And it goes on special every few weeks, so it's pretty reasonably priced out. It gives you get about $4.50 on special. That's not bad for, so, for something that's the main ingredient in a meal that will last, say, six nights. That's pretty damn good value, I reckon. You can, you can eat pretty cheaply at home if you, um, if you make sure you buy specials. And finally, there's just two other ingredients which I will shove in now. One of them is black pepper. And the other one is oregano. Or oregano as they say in the States. the oregano going in. And that's basically the recipe. Now the only other thing I want to do is cook up some spaghetti, which I will do soon. And um, I'll transfer this into another bowl for storage in the fridge. And like I say, I've just basically now got myself a very, I find it's a delicious topping for pasta. I use it for uh, spaghetti, but you can try other pasta, obviously. And uh, incredibly cost effective. So healthy, cost effective and delicious. So what's not to like? Anyway, that's probably about it for me. I'd say goodbye now because uh, I might just give you a passing shot of me uh, hoeing into my food, uh, but now I'll just go cook up some uh, spaghetti. You don't want to see that. That's ultra boring. Everybody knows how to cook spaghetti. Well, they should. And, um, and that'll be it. And here is the fruit to my later. Sorry for the uh, intrusion of sound in the background. I'm watching Tucker Carlson, but uh, this is my meal. And I'm looking for lots of Parmesan on top. So we'll see how it goes. It's always worked in the past, so I don't see why not now. Please uh, consider subscribing to my channel if you think there's anything there of, uh, of use to you or entertainment or whatever. And uh, either give, do that or give me a thumbs up or, or if you're feeling really energetic, do both. That'd be great. Uh, but uh, please don't ignore me. That's the worst thing you can do on YouTube is be ignored.